to be able to develop that, I know this transitioned a bit into the Grand Slam offer because I feel like the offer is the way to at least communicate what yeah. you're trying to solve. Um, and I wanted to transition there because we made that promise of telling a bit more <laughs> about it. My question would be this, is that if I'm out there and I'm basically, I feel like I'm selling the same thing as everybody else, right? And I know we talk a lot about that in the book. Um, what is the mistake that's happening? Because a lot of people, let's say I'm starting an agency, maybe I'm a consultant, maybe I'm a coach, um, or maybe I'm in the workplace and I'm working a job that's similar to everybody else. And I feel like the way to you know excel is maybe to do just a little more than everybody else at the same price, or maybe to be a little cheaper than everybody else and provide the same value. But I know you look at this very differently and you introduce something fascinating around the Grand Slam offer. So a saying that I have, it's not in the book, but it's marketing is about different, business is about better. And so, and you said a very key point is that the offer is the way that we communicate the value that we're going to deliver, right? Because we haven't delivered it yet. We're just communicating the value. And so having a, a Grand Slam offer will get tons of people to say yes to you. Then the problem is delivering on the promise, right? But those are, for me, I would rather choose to have a delivery problem than to have a demand problem. It's much easier to fix a machine that's got electricity going through it rather than have a machine that has no juice going through it and then try and speculate about what's wrong with it. So I'd rather figure out what does everyone really want and then figure out a way to deliver on it. You know, and one of the ways, you know, the process that I take people through the book is, first off, you'll probably need to charge more than you currently are, number one. Number two, you probably need to have a less scalable business model in the beginning, and that's okay, because what we're doing is you're going to get paid to do R&D, right? My less scalable business, like, and so I'm, I'm, I'm preaching a trajectory that I followed, right? And it's also a trajectory that I've seen so many other, uh, you know, very successful entrepreneurs follow, which is everyone has this rocky cutscene that no one talks about. Right, these great marketers spent four years cold calling, doing door-to-door -door sales, stuff that no one talks about. I spent, I sold four thousand gym memberships before I ever taught anyone how to sell, right? And so I knew what I was talking about because I had done it so many times. But it wasn't, it wasn't very glorified at the moment, right? I was just selling a lot, but I didn't realize that my work was working on me more than I was working on it. And so, the 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 the, the first step that I just said, right? You'll probably need to charge more than you are. The second is you probably need to have some sort of done for you component where you're going to provide more than you normally would um, and just go above and beyond. Third is you want to solve every single problem that your, that your prospect has. And if you don't know what they are, that's why we do this really in depth kind of chapter in your business career. Like, how did Alex know how to fix so many gyms so well? Well, I spent two, like, not only did I have my own six in different locations, but I turned around 33 of my own in black markets, white markets, Latino markets, rich, poor, east, west, UK, Canada. Like, we went all over the place. And I knew that, okay, in these markets, this is what we have to do a little different. In these markets, they're a little bit like this. And, and I had to learn all these little nuances. But then it just, the, tre the depth of the knowledge, the roots were so deep, it was really impossible to compare my experience to anyone else's. And so most people just try and jump to, like, how do I make the offer better when reality is, like, how do I make me better? So that when I make my promise, I know that I can deliver on it, right? And so the, the kind of last step of this is like, how do I, how do I solve all the problems, which, you know, I, I put that within the vehicle of the bonuses, right? It's like, how can I solve every single problem or rather perceived problem that the prospect is, has or believes they have? Um, and then how do, I, how do I reverse all risk to them, right? How can, I make, how can I create an unbeatable guarantee? And my kind of thinking around the guarantee is, especially when you're starting out, you almost want to make a guarantee that you're scared of. And... I say that for two reasons. One, because you'll sell more people. Two, because if you're scared of it, then you're going to work your ass off to try and fulfill on it. And I think that if you raise that level of what you're promising, you just you'll it will force you to level up. Because a lot of people sell like how to make money. And I'm like, well, what if you just guaranteed that they make money? They're like, well, I couldn't do that. And I'm like, well, why not? That's the reason you don't make money. Like that. That's why you're not making money. Like the average, the average, you know, in our licensing. And just for everyone who knows, like that's one of seven businesses that we're, we're a part of. It's, it's, that's kind of how we started our journey is the fitness. And I, I tell more of those stories because in some of the other companies, I was able to jump like five steps ahead. But like we kind of walked through every one of these steps with that business. Like the average gym that worked with us added $240,000 a year in top line. That's average. That was the average. You know, the average gym, 3.1x uh, their profit. They went from twenty nine fifty a month in take home to eighty nine hundred dollars a month in take home, net of our fees on top of what we what we we build, right? And so, if you have that level of deliverable, right, on average, then you will make a lot of money. And that's really what it comes down to. Like, 
Like, like if you if you can deliver on a promise and deliver something that's very valuable, where people don't have to have lots of effort and sacrifice, which gets into the value equation, right? Which I, I put inside the book, you will be rewarded by the marketplace. 